یا بہنوں اور بھائیوں آج یہاں جوان میں رہنے والے بھارتی مول نواسیوں کے ساتھ ملنے کا سو اوسر ملا ہے میرا من میں بہت پرسنتا ہے مگر تھوڑا سا کل سے مجھے رننگ نوس اس کو کہتے ہیں نا سردی کے کارن سے تھوڑا کمفرٹیبل نہیں پھر بھی ہم لوگوں نے یہاں آتھکت کاریکرم کے لیے آیا اور آپ لوگوں سے نہ ملنا اس سے ہمارا کاریکرم ادھورا رہے گا اس لیے سوچ کے ہم نے کہا بھائی چلیے شام کو ملیں گے تھوڑی دیر ان کے ساتھ بیٹھیں گے آپس میں بات چیت کریں گے آئی فیل ایکسٹریملی ہیپی ٹو بی امنگسٹ یو آل ٹوڈے دس ایوننگ پرزینٹ ایوننگ دیٹ وے اینڈ آئی فیل اٹس اے پریویج این آرڈر فار می اینڈ مائی ممبرس آف دی ڈیلیگیشن ٹو میٹ اینڈ گریٹ انڈین sisters and brothers who are all staying here. I bring warm greetings from India and we have the people of India and also government to all of you and wish you all very bright, happy, prosperous future India in this country. My visit, friends, makes an important milestone As I am told, this is the first high-level bilateral visit from India to Gaban. The visit is even more important at a time when India is celebrating 75th Ajayadi Kamrath Mahotswam Banare Pura Desh. In that way, today, I have been able to get a lot of support. I am delighted to visit this beautiful country, beautiful as well as beautiful also. People are peace loving. People are peace loving. And they work hard to make progress in their life. This uh, visit makes me delighted because this liberally the waters of uh, Atlantic Ocean. It's really beautiful. Morning, I had an occasion to go out and have a morning walk. I enjoyed it. What impression I had in mind about Western Africa. People told me it is equally hot, if not more, than Delhi. But after coming here, and morning, going for a morning walk and spending time with our friends here, my opinion is totally changed. I am thankful to the government of Gabon for the warm hospitality they have extended to me and to my delegation. Let me share with you. Today, we had a very fruitful, meaningful, constructive discussion with His Excellency, Honorable President Ali Bongo Unimba. And I was so much impressed by his rant and affection and his liking for India. And he has a clarity about various issues between both the countries. And he was forthcoming say that they want to have friendship with India, they want to strengthen the bilateral relations, they want to increase and improve the trade between both the countries. It is only one billion as are now, but there is a great scope to increase our trade between both the countries. My dear sisters and brothers, 
you are fortunate that you have come here. My advice to people who go abroad is go, learn, learn and return. This is my advice to all people. Return back to one is physically if you are interested, other is return certain portion of wealth for the sake of the motherland. I always say wherever I go, people should remember four things. One, remember mother who has given you the beautiful birth. And also remember the motherland, the place which has given you this opportunity. And also mother tongue, the language that has come from mother's womb, we should profess, we should propagate, we should promote and we should feel proud that so and so is our mother tongue. Whether it may be Sindhi, whether it may be Hindi, whether it may be Marathi, Assami, Punjabi, Bhojpuri, Telugu, Tamil, Canada. There is no dearth of uh, languages in India. So many languages. And uh, we feel proud because of the rich cultural content of our languages. So I tell our friends also there, in India, particularly the younger generation, who are very much influenced by the Western mindset. The colonial rule we had, unfortunately. We were made colony, of course. Here, Gabon also was a colony for some time. And uh, the way our culture, our language has undergone a change and the priorities were changed. And now it has become a fashion for many youngsters to learn English. Nothing wrong in learning English. First, I say, first and foremost thing is, first learn your mother tongue. Speak in mother tongue. Leave the mummy daddy culture. Ma, ma, mare, antara se aata hai. Mummy, yaha se aata hai. You try once and you will experience the same also. I tell all the youngsters, the, the mother tongue, language is like your eyesight. The other language which is foreign is like your spectacles. If you have eyesight, then spectacles will work. If you don't have eyesight, even after a born glass pane, this has been our experience. So I suggest to all of you, you are here in this country, respect the rules and regulations of this country. Follow the instructions given by the government from time to time. It is our duty when we go to other country and the country gives, provides you hospitality, we must respect their laws, their conventions, their customs, systems. But at the same time, being Bharatiya, being Indian, we should not forget our roots. We should promote the roots within the family, with the children, to tell them what our grandfathers, grandparents have given us and that rich cultural heritage they have given to us. Family system. Grand, respecting grandmother, grandfather, respecting parents, respecting mother tongue, respecting nature. This has to be remembered by one and all. I, that's why I advise youngsters, nature, culture, together for better future. Nature, culture, together for better future. This has to be a movement. And I am here in a country which gives a maximum importance to biodiversity. I am told a country of this size, they have more than 11 or 12 biodiversity parks. They give importance and the world also slowly recognizing and realizing the importance of uh, climate change and the need to protect the climate. We are seeing the challenges posed by the climate change that are happening across the globe. Things are going heavy. The reason is people started playing with the nature. We did not respect the nature. That's why nature is showing its fury on us, untimely rains are no rains according to season and reason. And also the other calamities, tsunamis, so many things are happening 
in different parts of the world. The reason is not respecting the nature. So we must all, all of us being the world citizens, we must rededicate ourselves to the nature, protect the nature. This is one advice I have to all our friends, Indian friends here. This country, this country is small, population is small, area is vast, and the way they are protecting the biodiversity, protecting the nature, protecting the forest cover, 78% forest cover or 80%. This is really amazing. That will really help us to be healthy. It is not important to be wealthy. It is more important to be healthy. If you are healthy, you can become wealthy. If you are not healthy, even if you become wealthy also, you will not be happy. This has to be kept in mind. So all of us should give importance to nature. Give importance, our children should be told to give importance to the lifestyle, which has undergone a change. Children are becoming a little lazy. If you become lazy, then they will become crazy. This has to be understood by all. So, certain amount of physical fitness. If you, they are physically fit, then they will become mentally alert. And also, our aim is not only to have prosperity. Our ultimate aim is happiness. Prosperity is important. Richness is important. But at the same time, happiness. That happiness index will come. If you respect the nature, nature will be kind to you. So follow the rules and regulations. Do not create problems to others and do not irritate them. You follow the rules. And then we should all think in terms of a common interest. You know that we are Indians, we are Bharatiyas, we are Hindu, that cultural identity. So Adi Kalse, Veda Kalse, Punya Kalse, Purana Kalse. Amara Poro Jone, Dia, Dia, Virasat, Memko Mila, Bharatiyata. This is Kayam Rakana, Bhot Jururi. This, that's why India, once upon a time, was known as Viswa Guru. Because of the advent of foreign rule, we lost some of our moorings. And then we have to again look back and go to the roots and re assert ourselves. India's civilization is one of the oldest civilization. Egypt, Greece, Athens, there are other civilizations which are also old. But what is the position of those civilizations? What is the position of India? One has to understand. India is on the move. We have in inherent intelligence among our people. That's why whoever goes abroad in different parts of the world, Indians are in the forefront, be it business, be it education, be it medicine. The top people, if you take America for example, the top people there in the IT sector, top people there in the medical sector, top people in the teaching Indians. The reason is there is inherent knowledge. What is required is the governments and the people, they have to recognize that and encourage. Today morning, I told the Honorable President, India will be happy to provide assistance for the Gabon youngsters. We will extend support with regard to IT. We will also provide our technology and knowledge in various sectors. We will also focus on training the officers here. Already the training process is on. We will have committed to them, we will train one more batch of the people because people, India is known for better administration. And I also told Honorable President and the Prime Minister later, we had a series of meetings today, President, then Prime Minister, then External Affairs Minister, then Investment Minister just now, number of ministers. We had a luncheon meeting also. And then there was an opportunity to exchange views, understand each other's point of view, and then draw a roadmap 
to move forward. So I assured the Gabon leadership that we will be happy to provide skill development to the people here on a large scale. By our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, you are all aware, he is leading from the front. Now India is recognized and respected worldwide, everywhere. Now India has taken note. India is not in a position to be ignored. Now, what you have seen also in the media, our Prime Minister, though relatively young to the political space at the national level, is one of the most popular world leaders today. We should all feel proud of it, living for him. And India also is on the move. I had an opportunity to work under Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee as a rural development minister, rural road connectivity, housing, mass, massive housing, etc. And then we have now wonderful road network across the country. You also have the advantage of IT, highway connectivity, rail connectivity, tele-connectivity, television connectivity, port connectivity, political connectivity, connectivity revolution that great leader Sri Adil Bihari Vajpayee has initiated. And we are seeing this effect of this march. And our Prime Minister, the present Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modi, he stressed more on reforms. Reforms are the need of the hour. Reforms in administration. Reforms in every sector in India, because ultimately, as I told you, our aim is to make people happy. So he gave a three-line mantra, simple. He said, reform, perform, and transform. Transformation of the nation. We must all develop a positive mindset, positive, constructive. That is very much required for a nation which is moving forward. My dear friends, today, our meeting with the Honorable President Ali Bongo Ondiba, our meeting with Prime Minister Excellency Mrs. Rose Christiana Vasuka Rapuno, and also our cabinet colleagues, President of the Senate. You know that Indian Vice President is not only Vice President, constitutionally to assist the President, but also presides over the upper house of Indian Parliament, Rajya Sabha. We have the dual responsibility. So we have utilized and they also wanted to have a meeting. Mrs. Lucy Milebu Obosam, President of the Senate and uh, the President of National Assembly, Post Thambukubi, and other distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We were able to meet them, our counterparts in Gabon. I am impressed that Gabon has a small but active diaspora. And I'm happy to note that despite being only 1,500 in number, we have made significant contribution in various fields. I compliment you all for the progress you are making here and the good name you are bringing to our country. I'm happy to know that Indian cultural heritage has been kept alive by you and all. Most Indian festivals are celebrated by entire community together. It's a very happy thing. It is a matter of pride for all of us that Indian community enjoys a reputation of being a peace-loving community. The world badly needs peace because peace is the prerequisite for progress. If you have tension, you cannot pay attention. This has to be kept in mind and we should see to it that all obstacles in the process of peace keeping should be removed. I have also made it very clear to the leadership here that India, we have a problem of some of our neighbors encouraging, aiding, funding, training terror. Terror is the enemy of humanity. Terror has no religion. It will destroy everybody, including the people who are perpetuating it. So that has to be kept in mind. We should all join together and work for peace and move for the progress.
my dear friends, you might have heard about the initiative taken by Indian government. Post-COVID, people thought of India will be shattered, but we will stood. Thanks to our scientists, doctors, our medical staff, they have done a wonderful duty during the COVID crisis and were able to minimize the damage. Not only that, India has given medicines and also vaccine to more than 150 countries across the globe because we have that wisdom and talent and we believe in the philosophy of share and care. Share and care is the core of Indian philosophy. Vasudaiva Kutubakam, Sarve Jana Sukhino Bhavantu. So our attitude should be always like that. We should help others so that they also help the other neighborhood. The, because of the digital platform created by the government, our exports effectively handle the new COVID-19 cases and successful implementation of our vaccine campaign have empowered opening up and recovery of our economy earlier this year. One day Bharat mission was successfully undertaken by India to repatriate millions of Indians stranded abroad, which is the largest such evacuation operation ever carried out by our government. Similarly, our vaccination drive against COVID-19 is one of the largest vaccination drives in the world. We also played a proactive and responsible role in the global fight against COVID-19 pandemic. We have initial days, we have supplied medicines such as hydrochloroquine, paracetamol and other medical items to over 150 countries. We also shared our healthcare experience and expertise with the partner countries in our neighborhood and Africa. This was followed by Vaccine Maitri, under which we supplied over 178 million doses of Made in India vaccine, Covishield and Covaxin to 96 countries as well as to the United Nations. Today I can share with you our know, discussion with the President and also the Prime Minister. We have impressed upon them the need to restructure the United Nations. We are one-sixth of the world population. And the importance to us in the United Nations Security Council is minimal. Even the same case with regard to Africa also. Africa and India, they deserve more attention. And they should be given enough opportunities in the affairs of the United Nations Security Council. Otherwise, you know, People think the United Nations means only they just talk, they are not able to do anything. And we have seen what is happening in Ukraine also. I don't want to interfere or make comments on the internal affairs of other countries, but at the same time, everyone should follow their dharma of not to interfere, not to transgress into the other's land and other's affairs. The people of the country. They should be allowed to elect, select choice of their governments and way of governance. We are the largest parliamentary democracy in the world. We feel proud of it. We conduct elections every five years without fail. Sometimes more than five years, so in between also. You know that. We have always had peaceful election. That is the speciality of our system and we hold elections regularly and that's why we are able to get an able leader and a stable governance. The agriculture which is the backbone of Indian economy, 60 percent of the people even now depend on agriculture. So we are focusing more and more in bringing reforms, structural changes in agriculture and the government of India led by by Modi along with industry, is giving more importance to the rural infrastructure, to the agriculture, crop insurance, price stabilization fund, and also giving adequate, timely information to the farming community about market conditions in different parts of the country. 
we are also trying to improve further the crop insurance also, which is very much vital. We are also having the Gati Sekti production link incentive schemes, which will drive investments combined with supply chain strengthened by structural reforms taken in the past few months. This will deliver high post-COVID economic growth. I, you might have seen in newspapers, the one sector in India, in spite of COVID, all other sectors are affected to some extent. Of course, except the pharma. Pharma was a need for people in distress, they want medicines. But all other se sectors affected. The only sector which has proved a positive growth is the agriculture sector. Thanks and hats off to our agriculture community, in spite of uh, not being organized, in spite of uh, not being that much educated, they have done wonders. And the production levels have increased in COVID. That is the greatness of our agriculture, because agriculture is basic culture of India from the age-old days. So we are giving more and more importance to agriculture. The FDI flows to India during 21, 22 reached the highest level of our US dollar, 83.57 billion. We also have largest startup programs in India, our youngsters. And uh, nearly 100 unicorns in which party were added in 2021 alone. That's how the India is uh, making uh, progress. We also increased all-time high annual merchandise exports about US dollar 418 billion in 21-22 by benefiting from a rebound in world economy and resurgence of industrial demand in advanced economies. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, I'm happy that our bilateral trade with Gabon has also increased exponentially in 21-22, but there is still scope for further expansion. There is huge potential for trade and investment between both the countries. We had a meeting of CIA, Confederation of Indian Industry, Trade Delegation from India, and also their counterparts here. They had a detailed discussion. We were also able to sign certain memorandum of understanding between both the governments. This, all these things are a positive sign. The Indian government announced setting up of 18 new missions in Africa with an aim to expand India's diplomatic footprint in this continent. This will certainly enhance our economic outreach in Africa and will be immense value to Indian industry interested in working in Africa. Today I can tell you the President has told me, he said, Mr. Vice President, there is enough vast agriculture land available. He said, you are welcome to come, take care of the agriculture land and increase the production, share the profit with us. This is a wonderful opportunity. I feel that our farmers can be encouraged to come here, identify. We don't want to usurp anybody's land. We don't, we don't believe in colonialism. We don't believe in expansionism. We believe in peaceful coexistence. So where there is a scope, the agriculture sector in India, definitely the, I think they will take care of this and also utilize the opportunity provided by the president in a friendly gesture. Africa has been receiving the highest assistance from India. The project is reviewed by our development partnership, cover roads, railways, power, ports and shipping, telecommunication, health, education, aviation, energy and agriculture. They are the areas where we should work together further. Uh, my dear friends, I don't want to take uh, uh, much of your time. Each one of you should become an ambassador not to replace the present ambassador, but to enhance the number of ambassadors. You are a goodwill ambassador on behalf of India. So if you perform better by your conduct, by your caliber, naturally the local population and the government here, they will be more interested to do business with India. You have established over the years bonds of friendship with Gabon citizens 
and are sharing your prosperity with them. Your interactions build bridges of understanding and appreciation of our cultures also. So I would urge you to maintain connection with India and see how you can play a positive, characteristic role in bringing prosperity to both Gabon as well as India. You can help shape a new India. Feel proud of our achievements in the last 75 years and share the joy of becoming an inspirational India. This is the aspiration of the Prime Minister. This is the aspiration of the people. So let us all join together, work together to take the country forward. That's my appeal to all of you. I can assure you that India is deeply committed to strengthen its bond to the diaspora and to attend your needs. The safety, security, welfare and well-being of Indians in all parts of the world is the priority for India. So I invite each one of you to join in our transformative journey and be partners in our growth. I would like to thank each one of you for positively responding to the invitation sent by Ambassador today, this evening, to come here, meet and greet. As I told you, I would have been much more happy to spend more time with you, interact with you, but for my ailment of having some temporary problem of the running nose and also, to some extent, body pains also. But I'm sure it's temporary, it will be over, and we will be able to move on together. After I leave also, the minister, the members of parliament from different parties, they'll be here, they'll spend some more time with you, you can interact with them also. I think they have been already introduced, Dr. Bharati Pawar. She is the Minister of Health in Government of India from the state of Maharashtra. Mm. And uh, the other members is Sushil Modi, the former Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, now member of Rajya Sabha. <laughs> he is from Bihar, another larger state. Then we have uh, our Tomarji. He comes from the largest part of India, UP. <laughs> UP. UP accounts to more than 20 crore people and he comes from the agriculture background. So, I am here, he is also there. And then Mr. Ravindra Nath. Ravindra Nath is the youngest member of the delegation. He is from Tamil Nadu, belonging to Anna DMK party. You know that in Tamil Nadu, Amma party and Aya party both are there. We have, he is from ADMK. His father was Chief Minister for some time and also Deputy Chief Minister also, the AOP, Panir Selvam. So they are part of this delegation. Along with them, our, my secretary to Vice President, Dr. Ivy Subarov, he is also now part of the delegation. We have uh, our Foreign Secretary who is looking after this region, Sudam Ravi, is also part of this delegation. And there are other friends. So I would like to thank once again our ambassador, Sri R.K. Verma, senior and other senior officials for organizing this wonderful evening. All the best to all of you. Namaste.